everyone, this is Chelsea from Paper Rock Teo Studio and today I'm sharing with you a collaboration I did with Macy at Matt Silk Channel. She creates coloring pages and you can purchase them on her Etsy shop and then you can download them as many times as you want, print them on whatever paper you want and color as much as you want. Of course I'm a mixed media artist and so I tend to use the coloring pages for things other than just coloring. And so um, this is her new spring garden collection and I printed out a few of the, the uh, pages. There's many more pages than this but um, I just printed out a few that I liked and I decided to use them on an art journal page in my jelly printed art journal. It's almost full and I just would like to, to uh, fill it up. So I started out with these square patterns that she has and I'm just coloring them using some different ink sprays in the colors of the page that I'm going to use. I don't know if I showed it yet. <laughs> I did pick out a page. There's, there's only a few left. Um, that purple went completely crazy. <laughs> That's the thing about ink sprays. You just really don't know what you're going to get. Sometimes they spray, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they spray too much. It's just kind of a, you know, just a, a guess as to what you're going to get. But anyway, back to mixed media and art journal paging pages with mixed media. As you know, it's just all about making layers and making, you know, you start out with your background layers and then you have your foreground layers. But in the case of this page, the two different pages are obviously from two different prints and they're very very different. When I made the book I tried to make things match up as much as I could but ultimately some things just aren't going to match up. So what I'm doing with these pieces that are that to me are kind of backgrounds she's created them as coloring pages but to me they're kind of backgrounds is I'm using them to try to make the two pages blend together in color. So I'm adding some orange to the purple side, I'm adding some purple to the orange side, and I'm just doing this by adding these patterns that I've sprayed. And it's just part of my beginning process. This stuff does show at the end, but it's not obvious. It's not like the thing that's going to stand out and be jumping into your face. It will be a background element. So I cut them up after I sprayed them into two by two squares and I glued them on there with some matte gel medium, which is like a thick medium. I found that that's my favorite sort of thing to do. And I found that putting it on with the palette knife works really great. So that's what I've been doing lately. And now I have some of the little flowers that she has in what she calls extras, which I don't know, I think they're the coolest things in there. <laughs> I like the extras sometimes more than the main pages, but but that's just me. Um, I like big bold graphics rather than little teeny tiny things. So I'm using my Koi Travel Water Colors set to color these in. And I guess this is coloring, so these are coloring pages and I've colored them in. I've also fussed to cut them out because they're going to be coming be the next layer in my layering of mixed media stuff. And so that is my plan. I'm kind of mixing some colors on the little plastic palette that comes with the watercolors as I'm going. If I don't have exactly the color that I want, I just mix a couple of the other colors until I get what I want on the palette. So I think that's pretty cool about this little travel set. It also comes with the water brush, but the water brush that I'm using is a different one. But anyway, I'm again using the same colors, the pink, the orange, the purple, and the green. It's kind of a mossy green, so I mixed that olive green with the more spring green to get the color I wanted. And I add add a little bit of yellow too which isn't in the background but <laughs> it will be now. So like I mentioned this is a collaboration it's like kind of testing out her new kits when they come out 
And I have another video with her really cute faces from A to Z set that had a whole bunch of really cute girls that she's drawn. I'll link that one in the info card so that you can see the art journal page that I did with those. And I'll also, also link her channel and her Etsy shop where you can purchase them. I think, you know, if, if you feel like you're challenged by drawing, it, these are really great, cute graphics that you can use by just cutting them out with collage or coloring them and and using them on your art journal pages. I really recommend them. So now these are some of the other little things that were in there and I'm deciding, I'm laying things out, deciding what I'm going to have as my foreground images. And I, I really like the little basket, but then I decide I'm going to go with the gardening tools and the seeds and the little seedling. So I need to uh, cut these out as well. <laughs> Not sure if I'm doing that next. Oh, I decided that the background is crazy bright, so I'm going to push it back a little bit. So I'm just using watered down gesso, just white gesso, and I'm just going to give it a coat and then kind of blot it off with a baby wipe. But this is where that whole busy background becomes in the back instead of like out front. <laughs> That's why it's called the background, right? <coughs> Excuse me. So it looks like I'm, some people really, this just drives some people crazy when you do this in mixed media. <laughs> oh no, you've just did all that work and now you're covering it up. That's crazy talk. It really, really makes some people crazy. It's pretty funny. But this is just part of the process. I didn't want that to be so bright and so overpowering because then when I put the other images on, you won't notice them. They'll just be blended in with all the craziness and it'll just be chaos that your eyes are seeing. So you do have to make a choice as to which things are going to be the ones that are noticed first and which things are more cool little details that you notice after the fact when you're really looking at it. Um, this is a leaf stencil that I really like. It's kind of becoming one of my favorites. And so I'm just putting some leaves on there because this is gardening and um, just adding some more randomness to the background. I'm kind of mixing my spring green with a little bit of the gesso to make it just kind of a real pale. I don't want it to be overpowering green craziness because I've already pushed this background back. <laughs> I don't want to make it, you know, crazy again. But it's just adding more randomness. Visual texture. If you want to get technical, it's visual texture. <laughs> and of course, some splatters with my leftover paint, just because I like splatters. I just like them. That's all there is to it. And then I'm going to fussy cut all these other little things that I plan on putting in, in the foreground of my page. And I'm not going to make you watch that whole thing. It's going to cut here in a second. There we go. Ah, they're all cut out magically. The magic of television. <laughs> and I'm just going to go ahead and use my Koi watercolors to color these as well. I was having fun with it, so I just decided to go with that instead of markers or something. And these, this isn't watercolor paper. This is just regular old printer paper and inkjet ink. So you would think it would be running, but it really didn't. I guess I didn't get it wet enough because I was using the water brush. I was really just uh, putting pure pigment on there and I didn't have any problems with running. Had I thought about it, I probably would have sealed it with clear gesso or something, but I didn't. And the watercolors are just soaking right into the paper and making it not a problem. So that was fine with me. Because sealing it would have been just another step. But if you do have a problem, that's what you, what you can do is just uh, use a brayer and just roll some uh, matte gel or matte liquid or uh, clear gesso over the uh, inkjet ink before it gets touched with water. So I'm just doing a little shading on her face. It's more obvious in the end product than it is here on the video because this isn't HD, I guess. I don't know, or the colors are a little bit off. 
So this one, I'm going to end up giving her a body. She's just a head with uh, flowers around her neck. <laughs> She's going to end up having a body. Just a real simple body. And then I have my little gardening tools. And I didn't have any gray paint, so that's just really watered down black. Which I guess would be gray. And the flower pot, I'm going to layer a few colors on there. Some kind of uh, orange and then a little bit darker orange and then some red to make it have a little bit of shadow. This is the kind of thing I like to do. I like to color and shade things. It comes in only second to uh, gluing paper to other paper, which is probably my favorite thing to do. <laughs> I do like to glue paper to put to things and to other paper and to boxes and to whatever. I like to glue paper. And I like to jelly print. That's something else I really, really enjoy. So yeah, just coloring. I don't have anything to say. I don't have any stories to tell. This page is going to be about gardening and uh, I do live in Arizona and our gardening pretty much consists of spraying weeds <laughs> over the rocks because basically all we have is rocks and desert plants and so we live in a, a place where there's a thing called an association and if you have one little weed growing in your rocks oh it's the end of the world and they start sending you nasty postcards telling you that you have a weed <laughs> so we um we do spray the uh, weed killer on our weeds especially the crabgrass type stuff it just keeps coming back you can't get rid of it but otherwise we have cactus and other types of plants that can survive with the low water no grass at all. So now I'm just putting down these images again using my palette knife and gel, matte gel medium from Liquitex. Works pretty darn well to do it this way. It sticks down, everything gets stuck, and there's no bubbles. So I'm finding it to be my most favored way of sticking paper to other paper. When I was fussy cutting that piece, it, I accidentally cut the little vine off. Because I'm a vine killer. I was just telling you how I spray chemicals on weeds, you know. That's it. I'm a vine killer. Terrible person. So I discovered that my favorite pencil is out of lead <laughs> at this point. <laughs> I'm like trying to draw with it. It looks like there's a piece in there, but it's just not coming out, so I have to change to a different pencil. And I have to find the leads. I know when I got the pencil, I got some really soft graphite things to go with it, you know, to refill it. But do I know where they are? No, I don't know where they are. I have no idea. So I'll probably end up buying them again because that's how it works. <laughs> I need a personal assistant that can come and uh, organize my studio because it's just a disaster in there. There's there's paper scraps everywhere and things are put away in places I don't know where they are you know I'm sure you all understand it's crazy in there so now I've gotten her kind of robe drawn in it's just a real simple even someone who claims they can't draw can do this just a real simple silhouette of a robe and I'm just using some of the purple watercolor to color it in a little bit. The, the background's still going to show through that, and that's fine with me. That's how I intended it. I could have colored over all the background and left the robe with all the different patterns that are on the background, if you know what I mean. But I decided to do it this way. That probably would have been cool, too. These are Stampin' Up! stamps, um, an alphabet that I'm sure is 
long discontinued but I have it so I'm using it and I'm using black gesso on a foam brush to apply it to the stamps and then cleaning them off on that wet baby wipe immediately after so they don't get all clogged up and nasty. Sometimes it's fun to stamp on your title instead of printing it or something if you have the stamps. Then of course most of the rest of this is going to be detailing and doodling and things like that with my fine tip Posca pins and my regular Posca pins a little bit. Just all the finishing details, you know, all the little added extra things. That's a Posca pin from the set of 12 that I have of the medium tips. It actually is skin color. I never quite realized that it was. <laughs> I was just thinking it was, you know, a peach color. I wasn't considering that it was skin color. But it worked out fine for her hands. And this is washi tape that I ordered off Amazon that came from Japan. I believe it is actual rice paper washi tape like real live washi tape. Not a synthetic version of it like we, some of ours are. But it, it does not stick down. I mean, it really doesn't. So I end up putting some matte gel over it with a brush. But I just wanted to have a little border there. I kind of thought it looked cool. And this is just some watered down titanium white acrylic just to kind of smooth out the brush strokes that I got using the watercolor on her robe. Still not making it completely opaque but just kind of smoothing in it out a little bit because it was bothering me. And then lightening up her cheekbones, nose, and forehead while I'm at it. There's where I'm putting the matte gel so that the washi tape doesn't decide to go rogue on me. This is my white fine tip Posca, my favorite pin in the universe. I think when I am buried, I will have one buried with me. That's how much I love it. <laughs> my favorite. Just adding little highlights to stuff. Little tiny details. Just because I can and I like it. I think it makes a big difference. I forgot to color her eyes. Made her eyes green because she's a garden goddess. So of course she has green eyes. Oh, and this is a little shading. Yeah, I forgot I did that. Um, Stabilo All Pencil is a very, very water reactive pencil. And I'm just putting it around the edges of the foreground images to blend them in a little bit. And uh, blending that with my water brush. Makes a big difference. You wouldn't think it really would, but it does. And I think I'm just uh, going to fill in some of the lines that I messed up a little bit and do a little bit of doodling. Making that little border on the corner edge there have some more weight because I'm trying to balance it with the large image on the other side. I need to have some more visual weight. That's better. There was so much black on the other side and then adding a few little doodle lines makes a big difference. There was some nice borders that I could have used on there. I could have cut them off some of those other pieces and uh, collaged them on instead of using the washi tape if I wanted to. She has a lot of nice illustrations.
just adding a little color to the letters because they looked kind of barren just being black <laughs> and besides purple you know what else can you say purple <laughs> some little white dots This is just all the kind of fussy stuff that I get into sometimes. Oh, for your information, this page took me an hour and 14 minutes to complete, and I've sped it up four times fast. And in a couple places, eight times fast if it was repetitive, but not very many this time. To get it to fit into roughly 20 minutes, which is what I like. Oh yeah, and then there was that one kind of blank spot, so I decided to uh, draw one of her style flowers there, with just with white, to fill it in a little bit. And I think it's pretty much done. If you like this video, um, be sure to like, or comment, or subscribe, or share, all those things that helps helps out my channel a lot. And also be sure to go and visit Macy's channel so that you can see the other art that was made with this kit. And you'll probably enjoy that. So that's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.